Cellular adaptation is the ability of cells to respond to various types of stimuli and adverse environmental changes. These adaptations include hyperplasia, hypertrophy, atrophy, and metaplasia. These adaptations can be physiologic or pathologic, depending upon whether the stimulus is normal or abnormal. A cell can adapt to a certain point, but if the stimulus continues beyond that point, failure of the cell and hence the organ can result. If cells cannot adapt to the pathologic stimulus, they can die. So let us discuss the four basic types of cellular adaptation, hyperplasia, hypertrophy, atrophy, and metaplasia. We will also explore the physiologic and pathologic stimuli in each of these cellular adaptations, beginning with hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is an increase in the number of cells. Physiologic hyperplasia occurs due to normal stresses. For example, an increase in the size of breasts during pregnancy, an increase in the thickness of the endometrium during the menstrual cycle, and liver growth after partial resection. Pathologic hyperplasia occurs due to an abnormal stressor. For example, growth of the adrenal glands due to production of adrenocorticotropin hormone by the pituitary adenoma, and proliferation of the endometrium due to prolonged estrogen stimulus. Important point regarding hyperplasia is that only cells that can divide will undergo hyperplasia. And these cells include the epidermis, the intestinal cells, liver cells, bone marrow cells, and fibroblasts. Hyperplasia does not occur in myocytes of the heart and the neurons of the brain because these cells do not undergo cell mitosis or cell division. The second cell adaptation is hypertrophy, which is an increase in the size of the cell. Physiologic hypertrophy occurs due to a normal stressor. For example, enlargement of skeletal muscle with exercise. The myocytes cannot divide, but they can increase in size. Pathologic hypertrophy occurs due to an abnormal stressor. For example, increase in the size of the heart due to aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis is due to a change in the aortic valve, which obstructs the orifice, resulting in the left ventricle working harder to pump blood into the aorta, and so this undergoes hypertrophy. Morphologically, hyperplasia and hypertrophy can look similar. They both result in actually an increase in organ size. Therefore, they cannot always be distinguished grossly, and microscopic examination is required to distinguish the two. The third type of cellular adaptation is atrophy, which is the decrease in the size of a cell that has at one time been a normal size. Physiologic atrophy occurs due to a normal stressor. For example, the decrease in the size of the uterus after pregnancy. Pathologic atrophy occurs due to an abnormal stressor. In general, atrophy is due to the loss of the stimulus to that organ. Specific types of loss of stimulus include when the cell has loss of blood supply or innervation, loss of endocrine stimulus, disuse, mechanical compression, decreased workload, or aging. Here is an example of atrophy of skeletal muscle because of misuse or aging. The final type of cellular adaptation is metaplasia. And metaplasia is the change of the epithelium at a site or location from one type of epithelium to another type. In metaplasia, the epithelium is normal in appearance, but in an abnormal location. 
How metaplasia occurs is that the epithelium, the cell that is normally present at the site, cannot handle the new environment, the stimulus. And so it converts to a type of epithelium that can adapt to these changes. Metaplasia is more often than not pathologic. A good example is seen in Barrett's esophagus and metaplasia in the lungs. Barrett's esophagus is due to reflux of gastric contents into the esophagus, which causes the epithelium type to convert from squamous to glandular. Squamous metaplasia in the lungs is due to exposure of respiratory epithelium to toxin and cigarette smoke. Most forms of metaplasia are reversible if the stimulus is removed, whereas a few, such as Barrett's esophagus, tends to be permanent once they are established. Metaplasia can progress to dysplasia. Dysplasia is not a true cellular adaptive response. It is where the cells divide and become abnormal in structure and function. It may progress to become cancerous. So those are the four important cellular responses, adaptations. But what happens when the cells cannot adapt to their new environment? When cells cannot adapt to certain stimuli, they become injured, which can lead to cell death if not reversed. Some causes of cell injury include hypoxia, decreased oxygen, ischemia, decreased blood flow to that cell, physical or chemical agents, trauma, infectious agents, aging, and nutritional imbalances. Cellular injury can be divided into two types reversible cellular injury or irreversible cellular injury. Reversible cellular injury, as the name suggests, can be reversed if the stimulus is removed and the cell can return to normal function. Irreversible cellular injury means the cell is damaged and dies in an uncontrolled process, termed cellular necrosis. The other form of cellular death is apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. In summary, we discussed the four cellular adaptations, hyperplasia, hypertrophy, atrophy, and metaplasia. We also discussed cellular injury, when the cells cannot adapt to their new environment, and the consequences of this which includes necrosis.